relationship um, and as far as she goes just as a person she's very bright she's incredibly sassy smart very funny and sarcastic um, she's a lot like me <laughs> um, but she's really sweet and you know she wants that relationship with her father she wants to be the hero that she sees him as and she wants to be the heroes that she sees uh, all around her, and uh, she has a bit of an uphill battle, but but she, I think she'll win your hearts, and I'm really honored to be able to voice her for you guys. Uh, Mrs. Chloe Bennett, you are no stranger to the Marvel Universe. You've already done five seasons of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as Quake. How is Quake different in this series? So, she's more purple. <laughs> Um, she is younger, so she's like a teen quake. She's a lot more like Sky. So it's kind of fun to get to voice the character that I thought I was going to audition for, and then all of a sudden I'm like a moody goth superhero. <laughs> um, so um, she's kind of she's 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 younger. She has a little bit more spunk, more a, a little doesn't take things as seriously. But I'm still excited to be a Shield agent and pretty confident in her skill. Uh, what can you tell us about? Quake and Ghost Spiders dynamic? Not that much, because I don't <laughs> want to give anything away. It's completely different from, well, they're totally, well, well you'll just, you'll just have to wait. It's not Ruby and Daisy. No, it's very But I actually think at the end there, she, I mean, I hope you guys are caught up with that at this point, if you see it, but I, <laughs> at the end of with, with Ruby and Daisy, they have like a, a moment. There was almost a coming together. Or yo-yo ruined. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo. Um, but it's it's actually just a weird coincidence that we get to work together twice again. I know. It's the best. It's so yeah. Yeah. Uh, Milana, welcome huh? to the Marvel Universe. Okay. <laughs> I tell you that someone telling me welcome to the Marvel Universe sends goosebumps down my spine. <laughs> uh, so Squirrel Girl is such 
such a fan favorite character, so much love for Squirrel Girl. Can you tell us a little bit of her powers of a squirrel and powers of a girl, and also about her tiniest best friend? Uh, she's also a Moana favorite. Um, yes, yeah, she can, you know, obviously she has a giant fluffy tail, and if you don't see it, it's because it's stuffed deep in her pants. <laughs> Um, how? I, it's science and magic put together in a cartoon animation. Uh, but it's, you know, she's, the thing I think that makes her really special is that she's unabashedly goofy while being smart and strong. She's very capable and I think, you know, one of the things that we're always looking for in our heroes is to provide something, is, is to provide permission for us to also be those things. And so even just playing her, I get to channel all of the goofiest parts of myself. And I think that as people watch this series, they'll be able to free up a little more too. And I hope, I hope. And then Tippy is my littlest friend. Uh, Tippy is a squirrel. She's my best friend. Um, it's, it's hard for me because I always want to kiss her. Um, but like me, not squirrel. Green has way more self-restraint than that. Um, but she's uh, she's kind of like the best sidekick you could want. In, in some ways, I kind of work as her sidekick because we really are partners in this. And she works as a liaison between me and the rest of the squirrel community. <laughs> yeah, any squirrels here tonight? No? Just one in the <laughs> Over here to my left. Hello, sir. Hi. Um, so 
you guys, you know, really got to work with the show from the very beginning. Where did this idea arise from? And, uh, yeah, please go. And why did you feel this was sort of an important story to tell? Well, first of all, the, there's been this exponential growth in fandom among girls and women over the last several years. It's been, uh, it's been incredible. And you know, all these publishing characters that have just popped with women and girls, and movie box office, and apparel, and all this stuff. So there was clearly this need. And so we had lots of conversations with girls, and they were dying for something like this. And we talked to them about which characters they would connect with, what kind of stories they wanted to hear from, and we knew which characters we felt they would connect with, and they told us. And so we went out to writers, and Margaret nailed it in her pitch. And from that, we knew we had the core story, and, um, and worked with these amazing actors, and Sana and Marsha, um, on building this story, and hopefully others. Love it. So, Sana, you uh, were very integral in Miss Marvel becoming a character. In many ways, I feel she's a little you. Um, <laughs> what is it like to see Kamala take on this life in, in, in the real world on the screen? And uh, what is what about the story is sort of personal to you? Uh, well, first of all, I feel like we like just tricked everyone. I tricked everyone, and now uh, brown people are taking over. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, it, it's really, really awesome. This is incredible. I mean, uh, this started about Miss Marvel started about five years ago, and now she's sort of everywhere. And now Pat Kavari is in my life all the time. It's amazing, and it's now spawned into this incredible um, film with these amazing, talented people right in front of me. So for me, it's um, really a, a nothing I could really ever imagine. It's much, 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 much bigger um, and so incredible. And it just goes to show that if you really believe in an idea and you understand the importance of this idea and the importance of making sure that we have characters that are like every single one of us, it will be successful. Surprise, girls like powerful characters that look just like them. And because all of the characters that we have in the show, like Ms. Marvel, um, have so many different fans and they've grown over the last few years because of the fact that we are telling them in a really authentic way. And we really wanted to do this story because of the fact that we believe in these characters and we believe in our fans and that they're gonna come out and support us. Um, and, and this is sort of, you guys being here today is really a testament to that. So thank you guys so much for showing up, for your wearing your awesome cos cosplay costumes. And Captain Marvel! Captain Marvel's right here up the front. Uh, so no, it's, it's, it's really, it's personal, it's emotional. Uh, I do this because I really love it and I believe in it. And um, I'm so excited for you guys to, to, see, to see what we've got in store. It's really special. Well, I'm excited for everyone to see what is in store as well. Um, Marsha, you got to be part of the development of this team. What was it about this team that you felt like these were the right characters to be all together? Well, when we were looking at building the series, um, there's always a tendency when you're talking about superheroes, which it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's that bigger is better. So you're talking about you know more powers, and more explosions, and more world-ending stuff, which is great for a lot of times. But in the case of this project, sometimes characters get lost. The bigger this stuff happens, the more great characters will tend to get lost or buried. And, we wanted to focus on the characters, so we wanted to come up with a group of diverse and unique and charismatic uh, young heroes that we could put together in stories that sort of represented not the world coming to an end, but the world outside your window, which is what we try and focus on in Marvel a lot of times. That's our, one of our philosophies. So we wanted to take real superhero stakes, but also make them genuine, and we wanted to reflect that in the characters, and I think we've done that. I mean, we have all of these fantastic actresses and actors, and um, we have a character, you know, like you said, that has the power of a girl, let, let alone a squirrel. She's got powers of a girl, so that's pretty powerful. Um, and we wanted to just bring them together, and, and in the case of this series, it was like, having all these young girls and young women in the audience that they get to, and young men, they get to see themselves on the screen. 
doesn't happen a lot. Um, uh, not in the truly authentic way that we're trying to do that with this series. So that was what we were trying to create with the characters and have that reflected, and I think we've been pretty successful so far. Marsha, to add on to that, I think, um, you know, when, when I was growing up, we got to see a lot of action-adventure series and films that starred lots of men. And I had no problem putting myself in those characters' shoes and seeing myself in them and feeling like I could relate to them. And now it's really exciting because we've made this amazing series and soon-to-be film with this mostly female cast. And I'm, as much as I'm excited for women to feel and girls to feel empowered by this story, I'm really excited for young boys to see themselves in these characters. Yeah. You know, because when you can see yourself in someone who's not like you, it creates a greater sense of, of community and Empathy. growth and, and, um, and understanding so that people aren't so otherized. I think that's true for the diversity that's represented in this show as well. Seeing people who aren't like you do things that you can really relate to, I think really helps build peace on this planet, which is really also what we're trying to do here at Marvel. I dropped. Uh, Sorry, Megan. You have gotten to be the writer behind these stories, which is so exciting. Um, what inspired you uh, from other stories or from Marvel stories? And uh, what characters are some of your favorite to script? Um, well, so obviously I'm a big comic book fan, um, and so I only read the story. It's funny because it's great to get to Daisy, because I remember reading her in this, the, that Caterpillar Files Hickman run that he did. Nods, yes, comic book fans. Uh, I think it was. I think it was also called Secret Wars. I feel like that. Um, and like I, I don't think people here read comic. Yeah, I don't know. Um, and uh, so with, I wanted to be honest with the and honor the source material, but also I wanted to. I don't know. I mean, I had my 18th birthday in New York when I went there to college, and that. I remember like living with my roommate Jen, and it was like two girls against the city. And I really, when I got the chance to write Kamala and Doreen, it was like two best friends in New York, you know, going going to take over the city. It really felt like that, you know. And there was a lot of like neat little places where everything intersected. Where I thought of, you know, like I played drums, and I was the angsty drum teen in high school, and so and then Gwen Stacy played drums, and it was so. And then it was like, oh, I remember being like a young professional woman, being like. I hope everyone in this meeting listens to me, and then so like that sort of was the same thing with Quake. And um, you know, there's a lot of really. I didn't want these characters to be the jock and the brain and the whatever. Like I wanted them to be more complex than that, and I wanted everyone to have a chance. It's funny because you talked about the shows when we were growing up, and I remember like watching. Um, I always watch X Men, and uh, I really wanted to be Jean Grey. I love Jean Grey. Um, and she, yeah, she's just an awesome character. But she had like, this thing where she'd always like pass out after she used her power. And I, remember, I remember like playing on the playground and I was like, I'm oh, here, I'm gonna lift the truck. And everyone's like, now pass out. And I was like, no. And, and that hurt as a kid. And so it was really important for me when I was writing Marvel Rising that this isn't a girl show in the sense that the guy characters were gonna have to, now you sit down. Like, this is for us. I wanted everyone to have a real drive. I wanted, a, as a writer, a personal connection to everyone, and I wanted everyone to get to play. So yeah. none of the men faint after they No, none of them is. And it's actually funny, because even though Squirrel is the most fun to write, um, actually, I am basically Patriot. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whenever I wrote Patriot, it was like, what would I say at this moment? <laughs> so he's, he's very rules-oriented and sort of like, I don't know that this is the best idea, um, but I am going to give it my best. <laughs> so, band question time. I hope you guys have been thinking of your excellent questions and you're going to walk slowly and orderly and gently and gingerly. Uh, the, if you have any questions about Marvel Rising for our cast and creative team here, we would love for you guys to be able to answer as many as we can in the time that we have left. 
We will not be able to probably get to everyone, but we will do our best. Yes. All right. Let's hear our first question. to be voice actors, um, like these ladies. Oh my God, they're stop. amazing. <laughs> um, um, and I think that at first I had a bit of an uphill battle because I'm very, if you know me, I'm very facially active. <laughs> like my, my eyebrows are on the loose all the time. Um, and so I kind of, you know, as an actor, you rely on your face and your body language and your eyes to really tell the audience what you're going through. Um, and with voice, you, you only have your voice. And I, I think I thought I was doing a lot at first, and I was like, what do you mean? I'm so emotional. And they'd be like, but, but it had to be 10 times bigger for it to read an animation. Um, so I think, I mean, in terms of like what helps, for me, I, I just think like, if, if, there's, if you go too big, they will pull you back. So probably start at like, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but like start way bigger than you think it should be. Um, and then yeah, you have to, I like to close my eyes um, and kind of, <laughs> this is so silly, but I do, I like to like close my eyes so that I can, you know, forget that I'm in a recording studio and really like uh, tap into some kind of like deeper emotion. Uh, but yeah, it's very different. It was definitely a learning curve. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's have our next question, Stefana. Hi there. Hi. My name is Amma That looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, season three finale. You yeah. have skills to make a real quick job. Yeah, I love it. You look amazing. Awesome. Uh, thanks. Hi, so my question is for Chloe. So you're playing two different quakes, but they're probably very similar. Mm -hmm. it, do you find it easier or harder to play them both? And do you see the similarities or are there differences? No, it's super fun. Um, I, like again, she's she's super similar to Sky and I, I, you know, I don't have to fight as much in person, which is like nice. Um, but it, like again, like the, you know, voice acting is a completely different thing. What is similar is because we have so much special effects and VFX on the show. I'm pretty much always acting with nothing, so it's like green screen. So I'm like, no, and there's nothing there. So that's similar to animation because you're reacting to pretty much nothing. Um, so, so that's a. I have like five seasons of warm up in, to react to monsters that are not in front of me. Um, so that's fun. I love your outfit. Thanks. Thank you. Next question. Come on down. Hi, um, my question is also for Chloe. And I was like wondering what you want to bring like from like Daisy and Quake on the show into like like on Shield into the animation. Um, there's actually a lot because this has been such a wonderful experience. There's a lot that we are actually we might be bringing to the, the vice versa. And that's a secret though. But there's, um, there's some exciting, there's some exciting stuff that we're kind of bringing. I don't want to get in trouble. There's a squirrel girl on the shield? <laughs> what? That's a great idea. <laughs> um, there's actually some certain things that we you guys, I don't know when we'll, you guys have been able to see it, but there's some, there's some stuff that's being brought from both sides, but I can't really say because it's a really good question. A great question, though. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Squirrel girl versus squirrel girl. Hi. Oh, yeah. Squirrel girl, um, she would be great. Yeah. Uh, um, just a general question. How do you guys think um, squirrel girl defeated Thanos? <laughs> it's a good question. It's a good question. With five million squirrels. <laughs> I think, it took, I think it took an army. Yeah. I think the, the great thing about Squirrel Girl is that she's incredibly resourceful. What she lacks in actual physical power, she makes up for in brain power. And that girl has connections. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Next question. Come on down. So we actually have a question together. Okay. Um, so, I heard you 
talking about how your Insta stories with Bradley Baker. He's yeah. amazing, by the way. So we were wondering if you guys all record together, or do you just some of you like how is the recording set up? We we Separate. recorded with I we recorded with D the three of us a couple of times. I know I recorded with him a couple of times. Sometimes we were I think because. Um, like Chloe said, a lot of times we're responding to nothing, and you can. And uh, you know, like like Dub said, you kind of have to close your eyes and imagine a world. It, it is the kind of thing where you can do it by yourself, but um, when you have other people to act off of, it increases the quality of the performance a lot. So whenever they can make the scheduling work, it's always ideal to have the most people in at once. Thank you. Thank you. Come on down. <laughs> Thank you. Your name's Kate, right? Yes. <laughs> I stalked you on Twitter. <laughs> so I'm hurting all over the place. <laughs> hey, girl, you look amazing. Thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, we're ho hopefully seeing some superhero team-ups with the adult superheroes like um, Kamala is going to most likely see her namesake, Captain Marvel. Um, if you were a character, who is your dream um, superhero team up with like some of the other um, you know Avengers and maybe not so Avenger people? Black Black Panther for me. Yeah. 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 We can both we can both be <laughs> Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say Iron Man. I would say Black Panther's sister and I'm forgetting. Yeah. The army, the female army. The female army. Yes. 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 That's cool. They're so loyal. That's like some they'll never leave you. Well, thank you so much. Hello, I'm kind of like the Florida Agent Colson. Yay! Yes. Go to Agents of Shield. Yes. Yeah. Hey, how are you? Anyway, uh, my question is to Milana. Since you have a great background childhood of being a child of refugees, and I know you do a lot of charity. I am a refugee work. myself. Yes, yes. Um, and since you do charity work in that, how can we be heroes ourselves and rise up to help in that endeavor? Woo! Wow. Wow. Excellent question. Um, I think that being a hero or being an active member of this world is something that we can all be doing on a daily basis, regardless of what you have access to. Um, I think it starts by being a person who looks for opportunities to do good, and that starts with helping out somebody when they drop something, or giving up your seat for someone who may need it more. There are the, the range from macro to micro uh, is infinite. And, uh, and then when it comes to bigger things, I think uh, figure out what you care about. It's usually pretty in age. I think when you can visualize something and it gives you goosebumps or you feel really connected with it, uh, we live in an age where all of the information is at our fingertips and it's so easy to find opportunities to volunteer, to donate money, to donate time, to donate your voice. And I think talking about things that matter to you, even sometimes when they're scary, is something that you have an opportunity to do every day. A question for the creators and probably a little bit with uh, Doug. I wanted to know on what brought on the change in the name to Ghost Spider from the name that we all, most of us probably know as uh, Spider Gwen. Well, to put it very simply, if she's out and about saving the day and calls herself Spider Gwen, she was a very secret identity. <laughs> um, Spider Gwen was not really the name of the character as a superhero in publishing, so we needed to create a name. And we thought a lot about this character's identity. And um, she glides, she's stealthy, she's learned all these detective skills from her father. And um, Ghost Spider, and what that spider actually does, we had a big internal conversation. And we even, you know, we talked to our editors and, and girls. And this is where we became. Well, I love identical twins, so Mrs. Olivia and Maddie. <gasps> Amazing! Yay! Thank you so much. Uh oh. One more question. For, we might need some help with the mic. <laughs> oh. Wow, well, I was bitten by a radioactive spider. 
which is, I think, how most things start. Most <laughs> All good things. No. <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was a bit of a simple beginning, um, but it led to you know this amazing character that we know of as now Ghost Spider. What's your name? Maya. You are so adorable and so sweet, and we love you. And so brave for talking into that mic. I know. Oh, yeah. Now, Maya, do you have your this? No. You need to no. go and get it because we're all going to take a selfie together. So. If our photographer who's here, our, come on over. So we're going to turn around, left fit, get up and squeeze together everybody here on the panel. And our photographer is going to come up here and we're all going to turn around. So strike a pose, be your best hero. And can we turn up the lights a little bit in the house so we can see all of our beautiful friends? On the count of three, we are all going to scream in Biggin as soon as Lene is ready. All right, one, two, three. Awesome acorns! Click the subscribe button for more Marvel Rising and other nutty videos from Marvel HQ.